Dun, dun, dun. We're back. Uh, myself is back. The Phillies are back. Kind of, sort of. There's still some concerns, but I'm not worried. We're fine. We're back on track. Uh, hello, I'm Jared from .NET Phillies. Thank you again for stopping by, either watching on YouTube or uh, listening on SoundCloud. Like I always say, with everyone uh, butters your egg roll there. Um, so Phillies took two out of three from the Marlins. Really should have been a sweep, um, but we'll get to that uh, uh, later. So let's let's dive right into it. So the Phillies are were kind of limping into this series, in the sense that you know they go one and five on that road trip, uh, get swept by the Giants in pretty embarrassing fashion. Uh, and what I think is funny is the Giants were losing seven straight coming into the series against the Phillies, swept us, and now we're losing four straight. So what does that tell you? I'm not still salty about it, please. I'm not still salty. Come on. Uh, but uh, Phillies, they played a played a really good series against, against the Marlins, and they have played well against the Marlins. You know, the, in years past, this was kind of their, their bugaboo. Their um their their demon their fear uh, uh playing the Marlins and clearly they 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 righted the ship this season, um they've played extremely well against the Marlins so let's dive right into it so game one um Aaron Nola was on the mound uh, he went six and two thirds four hits one and run two walks and ten strikeouts so he you know the 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 people saying September Nola was real, myself included, after that start uh, in Arizona. Um, he proved us wrong here. His uh, two-seamer was just like, you know, start at the left hand and just shoot right over. His two-seamer was like nasty. And when, when that pitch is on, it's honestly one of the nastiest pitches in, in the league. Um, uh, and and this this is going to be the episode of, of – or excuse me. This will be the title of the episode. I, I've deemed this series the Edmundo Sosa series. Uh, Edmundo Sosa, more like Sammy Sosa, am I right? hey Shout out to Twitter. Um, most of my jokes are very unoriginal. Um, but yeah, Sosa played out of his mind. He's been playing really out of his mind since the Phillies acquired him. Uh, whatever Kevin Long has done to to fix him, to you know, I fix him, you know, he wasn't he was decent last season with the Cardinals, but I think this is one of the most underrated pickups that uh, Dave Dombrowski has done. And and the thing that I like about what Dombrowski has done in acquiring some of these fringe guys is they have a lot of control left. You know, Edmundo Sosa has another four or five seasons of control. Garrett Stubbs. Hi, Garrett. Oh, that sounds weird. Oh, that sounds really weird. Uh, Garrett Stubbs has, has four seasons of control. Um, you know, guys like that where... You have those pieces already in Hoskins and Harper, Real Muto, um, Castiano, Schwarber. You have those guys, but then these guys who are going to be role or bench players um, are under control for another couple seasons. So I like Sosa a lot. Anyway, back to the game. Sosa homers in the third. He also had a double in the sixth. Um, the the homer that he hit hit off the foul pole, and I really didn't think it was going to go, but luckily it it obviously did. Um, and then the Phillies took a one nothing lead and, and, you know, more than ever, Nola needed a shutdown inning and he didn't, uh, uh right off the bat, uh, Lincoln gave up a lead off double and a single to, to give the Marlins, uh, a chance to tie it up. Uh, obviously he worked out of it. He struggled in the fourth, um, and the Philly starter, uh, this, this status changed, but they said it on the broadcast and I, and I made note of it over the last 10 games, they've given up 16 runs in the fourth inning. So uh, it's probably more now, but uh, you know, something to, to take note of, or maybe it's not more. What inning did Gibson do to the bed? Might've been the fourth. Maybe, I don't know, but, but as of game one, it was 16 runs in the fourth inning. So the fourth inning, I don't know what in God's name uh, happened to, to allow all the, you know, those bad things to happen, but fourth innings have been rough for the Philly starters, the, the last handful of games. So hopefully the ship is being righted. Um, he struggled in the fourth, worked out of it. My apologies. Woo. Um, Sosa made an excellent diving play to, to end the inning. Um, you know, the Sosa series, come on, where were you? 
Uh, the Phillies offense just continues to strike out over and over and over and over and over again. Um, but that's kind of the offense that Dombrowski built with, unfortunately, that I think something that we could work on is getting guys uh, who are more to contact guys like Gene Segura. If you want to bring him back, guys like Trey Turner, who Bryce Harper said was his favorite player. Maybe bring in that guy to be your leadoff hitter. Move Schwarber down. Anyway, um, you know, a lot of these guys are home runner bust. Uh, not a lot of average guys on this team um, outside of, you know, Real Muto hits for good average. So does Bohm. Uh, and Segura, but other than that, it's a lot of uh, of home runner bust guys. But anyway, um, Bryce, uh, something uh, to note of is, is something I don't think I'm still giving him the benefit of the doubt. But Harper has not did not look comfortable at all in the series. Um, he was over three against or uh, over uh, over three on uh on the first game. He had three strikeouts and a walk uh, at the end of the game. Or excuse me, he had that double. We'll get to the double. Um, Harper just did not look comfortable this series, didn't look comfortable in the Giants series. So just something to note. Um, I, I don't know what's going on with him. I am I say this, and then he's going to go like three for four tonight with like two home runs, and I sound like an idiot. But I hope I sound like an idiot. But um, yeah, something looks off with Harper. It looks like he's chasing a lot more he's not seeing as many pitches uh i don't know just something to be uh, to take note of uh, i'm not inherently worried about it i know bryce harper is the mvp of the league arguably probably could have won it back to back if he didn't get injured um but it is what it is i trust harper with my life so uh nola got uh 200 strikeouts on the year uh, I think they said for the fourth time in in his career, which is which is really nice. Nola's bounce back season has been huge. Uh, this is a guy who, you know, had that Cy Young chase 2018 season and then kind of fell off the face of the earth for 19, 20, and 21. Um, it, not to say he wasn't bad in, in last season. Like, he was fine, but he wasn't. And it, what made Aaron Nola so frustrating is he is a guy who – you know the stuff he has and you know the type of player he can be, but his stuff just isn't biting as much or or this. And he's kind of corrected that this season and he's been outstanding. Um, but, you know, good for him for 200 strikeouts. Uh, Brad Hand is uh, taking the reins for my least favorite uh, Philly. So he throws, a, I believe, his sinker or something off speed. Everything he has is off speed. Um, hits a guy. Uh, they review it, doesn't hit him. So what does he decide to do? Throw the exact same pitch and hit him. And that leads to the Marlins tying the game up. Um, not, you know, he hit the batter and then, you know, hits and blah, 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 blah. But, um, yeah, I can't stand Brad Hand. The guy stinks. It's finally catching up to him. Um, if you looked really deeper into his numbers outside of the ERA, uh, his numbers really weren't that good. He was getting extremely lucky. He was getting, um, you know, he was allowing a lot of runners on base, but was able to get out of it every time. And and finally, you know, the the straw is unfortunately breaking the camel's back. Um, you know, his game is starting to get exposed a little bit. Uh, uh, hopefully that gets corrected because I'd rather have Brad Hand give up like two hits and then give up no runs than whatever the heck we've been seeing these past few outings from him. So um, hopefully he corrects that ship. Um, JT Real Muto, uh, uh, the aforementioned JT Real Muto, um, threw out two runners and had just the, the first runner was Miguel Rojas and, you know, Philly killer Miguel Rojas guy hits 230 on the year, but hits like 500 against us. But, um, uh, it throws him out by like 10 feet. Like it was not even fair. And then they had a strikeout throw out double play, uh, in the ninth. Uh, he threw out uh, Philly legend Luke Williams trying to steal second, or it wasn't a strikeout throughout the play. Excuse me, it was a 3 0. And for some reason, the Marlins decided to send him on 3 0 when um, Brogdon's control, or excuse me, Robertson's control uh, was not great. Uh, but then, you know, they sent him, got him out, and then Phillies got out of the inning unscathed. Uh, in the bottom of the ninth, uh, Brian Anderson had a really bad drop ball that allowed Bryce Harper to get to second with a double uh, to which the Marlins decided to walk JT uh, to, to set up the double play. Cause there's only one out at this point. Um, 
And then for some reason, they decided to pitch to Gene Segura, who has been arguably the best, most clutch hitter uh, in baseball or on the Phillies the past few seasons in these big moments. Uh, and obviously he gets the walk-off single and the Phillies win three to two. Uh, my player of the game was Gene Segura um, just because of that hit. Like the guy was ready. He was, and he was, he loves these moments um, and it was good to see. So in terms of pitching, I mentioned Nola Alvarado went a third of an inning uh, with the strikeouts to clean up Nola in the seventh uh, Brad hand uh, burning the fiery pits of hell went uh, a third of an inning, one hit one earned run. Uh, he hit a batter just not good. Uh, Brogdon went two thirds of an inning, no hits, no one runs, no walks on uh, a strikeout. And Robertson went an inning, one hit, two walks and a strikeout. So Phillies won. It was kind of my heart was beating out of my chest, but we're good. We won. Game two. Uh, game two. Sammy Sosa ain't got nothing on Edmundo. He did it again. He homered. Edmundo Sosa homered. Um, again, uh, Segura also homered. Uh, Hoskins made an uh, defensively uh, the Phillies were really, really good. <laughs> I say that, but then last night happened um, overall, the, the Phillies defense has been pretty good this series. Um, I, I put a big asterisk on it once we talk about game three, but um, yeah, I, uh, Hoskins made a really, really good play in the sixth and falter uh, also made a great play. The ball was past Hopkins down the line. He dives, gets it, throws it up to Falter's like shins. Pardon me. And Falter made a really good play to get the out. Um, speaking, I mean, we all expected uh, Bailey Falter to be the stopper of this team, right? You know, Bailey Falter to be the ace of this team. Like we all expected. Uh, Bailey Falter has been outstanding since coming into Zach Wheeler's role. Um, and I, and I put that loosely, you know, he had to do starts that Zach Wheeler did like that's, he's not replacing Zach Wheeler, obviously. Um, and Wheeler seems to be on the right track to, um, to get going again, which is good. We have some injury updates. Let me just put that in the notes. So I don't, uh, lose, you know, my, uh, my place because knowing me, I, I forget, I mentioned it and then forget to bring it up. um, the falter has been really, really good. I've been very happy with him. Did his job. He had a rough first inning, but then just righted the ship. Did it exactly. My apologies. I'm so sorry. But he did exactly what we needed him to do. Just five, six innings, one or, you know, two earned runs or less, and, and we'll find a way to win. And that's exactly what he did. Um, There was worry that Bryce Harper injured something. He took a weird swing, but he's fine he was in the lineup last night so nothing to be worried about yet uh, i hope jesus for the love of god the last thing we need is him going down um the strike him out throw him out double play in the seventh that's what i thought happened in game one it actually happened in game two um just because jt is just the best i don't know if you could hear that but my dog was barking um if you didn't i sound like an idiot um but uh the 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 play was unreal Mostly because so Rojas strikes out. Um, it was a double play regardless because uh, Rojas on the throw got in the way, catcher's interference. So it would have been a double play either way. But what made this so impressive was Sosa was shifted towards the first base bag, caught it on the air, and then in one fluid motion just went down with the tag and was able to get, uh, I think it was Blue Day um, going from first to second. So uh, really unreal play for Edmundo Sosa, hence why this is called the Sosa series. He was outstanding. Um, Sosa, speaking of, uh, had an RBI double in the seventh uh, with a really good hustle from Matt Veerling. Matt Veerling was on second. The ball was tipped. They were shifting Sosa. The ball was tipped off the pitcher, went into right field. Veerling just never stopped running. He just kept going and going and going, uh, which proved to uh, be the quintessential run the Phillies needed. Um, because Brogdon, uh, gave up a homer to lead off the ninth, uh, and then gave up another base hit and I was getting worried. I'm like, Oh my God, like, is Sir Anthony really that important to this bullpen? Yes, he is. Because ever since that, the bullpen has not been great. Um, but obviously, you know, you've lost Canable, you lost, you know, Sir Anthony. So, so obviously the bullpen's not going to be as strong as, as it once was, but 
uh, he, struck, he struggled, but then struck out the next batter. And I think that was the confidence boost he needed because then he got the last two outs um, and the Phillies went for the three player. of The game was in Mundo Sosa, obviously, and uh, underrated player. of The game uh, is Jose Alvarado uh, of the season. I believe since so I'm not even going to say believe. So I, I think, cause I did, I did some digging and did some numbers crunching. You know, I do, I do do that. Um, I think Alvarado since, being recalled on was it June fifteenth? I think was the the date he was brought back up uh, after being sent down. I think he has a two point two five ERA, which is unreal for for a guy who has struggled with command and struggled with everything. And and he turned into the guy we thought we were getting when we traded for him with the Rays or from the Rays. So well, he's just been unreal. Um, whatever they're doing in Lehigh Valley is working. So. Um, pitching uh, outside of Alvarado, he went an inning and, you know, nothing but a strikeout, some, you know, typical business. Uh, Bailey Falter went five and a third, seven hits, two earned runs, no walks, three strikeouts. Andrew Bellotti went uh, an inning and two thirds, one hit, no one runs, no walks, two strikeouts. Alvarado went an inning and then Brogdon went an inning, two hits, one earned run, no walks and a strikeout. Uh, before we get to game three, I want to get into some injury updates um, because I have that up. Uh, the, uh, the docs, uh, the, the docs, Jesus, sound like a nerd. The doctors, uh, said that, uh, or excuse me, the Phillies, I'm all over the place. My apologies. Um, the, the Phillies announced that, uh, Dominguez is going to start a rehab assignment, uh, today, I believe he's going to throw an inning. See how he feels could be back, uh, by, by, you know, the weekend, hopefully Jesus, we need him. Um, Zach Eflin, same thing. He's going to start a rehab assignment and they're using him as a long man in the bullpen, uh, which I like a lot because it seems like the more he goes into games, the more he struggles. So having him in like a, you know, like a long relief role uh, for the bullpen stretch is going to be huge, especially if Gibson can't go long or if, uh, Thor continues to struggle. Um, he's a guy that, or Suarez, he's a guy who could continue to, uh, to, uh, that, that outing. And another guy to look out for is Griff McGarry. I really think we're going to see him in the big leagues in that role, uh, similar to Eflin. Um, obviously he's like the, the third head of that three headed monster, the pitching prospects the Phillies have with Andrew Painter, Mick Abel and, and Griff McGarry. He's in triple a, he kind of got rocked, uh, in his first outing, but, Listen, you can get rocked, but if you come to the big leagues and you perform, then that's all that matters. Um, so that's another guy to look out for. Uh, Nick Castellanos, uh, seems like good news. Uh, he's trending in all the right directions, could be activated on Tuesday, which would be giant for this Phillies offense. Uh, we, believe it or not, we really miss him as much as we dog on the guy. We we have missed him, but um, things are trending, trending in the right direction right around the good time. We're playing the Nationals. Um, we're playing the Nats this weekend. Uh, again, take care of business. But before we get into that, we got game three to cover, which this was a very frustrating game. Um, but uh, at the same time, you got to give Thompson a break in the sense that you need to look at the options he has and bullpen. And there was some mismanagement there that I could have, uh, you know, tinkered with. But uh, my first note is Kyle Gibson continues to be a loser, tried his best to tank this Phillies team. Um, Gibson went five innings, nine hits, four and runs, one walk, two strikeouts. So Gibson gives up three runs um, and the Phillies get one back on the Nick Maton home run. And Nick Maton has been incredible. Um, and then, you know, they start chipping away out, out Contra. And I can't believe how well and settled in this Phillies team has been against Sandy Alcantara. Like, I feel like every time I'm seeing a start from Sandy outside of that one against Atlanta, um, he is just dominant and, and the Phillies look extremely comfortable. And, uh, they mentioned on the broadcast, it could just be a comfortability thing. Like they've seen him so many times and and know the kind of stuff he has. So um, I, I'm glad that they hit the best of the best really well. But uh, the Phillies go up 3-1. Uh, they chip away. Alec Bohm had a huge two-run triple to, um, I believe, t- or no. So, oh God, how did they get that run? Oh my God, I'm drawing a complete blank. Oh Lord, this is embarrassing. Um Oh my God, I'm drawing a complete blank. They got the run from the Maton home run. I'm going to look it up. Oh, the, you know, professional podcaster over here. Professional podcaster over here. Just give me a second. Give me a second. All right. How in God's name did they get that run? 
Okay, my apologies. Okay, so Gibson gives up. So, oh, yes, it was the JT ground out. He had an RBI ground out, and then the Bryson Stott double, which tied it. That's what happened. God, I forgot. Jesus, that was embarrassing. Um, I did watch the game, I promise. JT had the ground out uh, to the shortstop. Allowed, they played back and, and allowed the run to score. Then Bryson Stott with the double. Tied up. Vibes are good. And what does Kyle Gibson do on his first batter? Gives up a home run, and the Phillies are losing 4-3 to three again. So Gibson is a, is a loser. I don't like Kyle Gibson. Uh, I like him as a guy. I don't like him as a baseball player, but besides the point. Um, and then Alec Bohm hits that triple, the two-run triple, on an awful play by the center fielder um, that allowed both runs to score. Vibes are high. We're, we're cruising. Uh, Vinny Natoli went an inning, uh, which I would have liked to have seen him go to. Um, that's just me. And then I don't understand why Rob Thompson doesn't use Sam Coonrod in more higher leverage situations. Like Sam Coonrod should have closed this game, honestly. Um, obviously, uh, options are limited. But for God's sakes, use Chris Sanchez for six and seven if you're that shorthanded because uh, Chris Sanchez hasn't pitched in a while. So have him pitch the six and the seventh. You could have had uh, uh, Vinny Natoli pitch the eighth and Sam Coonrod pitch the ninth. There you go. I did your job for you. But uh, Sam Coonrod went an inning. Again, he was excellent. Like, I don't understand why the kick gloves are still on Sam Coonrod. Um, Brad Hand gave up a leadoff hit, which I'm like, oh, here we go, uh, and then was able to, to work out of it. And, and poor David Robertson, um, I understand he's a competitor. He's a guy who, if he says he's ready, he's ready, um, according to Rob Thompson. So he went an inning, two hits, one earned run, one walk, three strikeouts. Struck out the side, but gave up the lead um and then the Phillies couldn't rally back and they lost so uh it, it's one of those things where you know what do you do in that situation because of you know the limited people you have the limited uh uh the limited um uh, bullpen options Jesus I'm so sorry I'm all over the place you have very limited bullpen options down there right now because of injury um, to begin with. And then you add in a guy who is 37 years old. His cutter is the velocity is way down. He's thrown like 60 pitches in his past, like three appearances. Um, it's a guy who, who desperately needs Sir Anthony to come back. Um, and, and I hope he, I hope Sir Anthony is activated this weekend. Um, that would be a huge boost for us, especially, you know, we don't have to worry about, um, you know, Robertson bl blowing saves and Robertson needs a few days off. Like he doesn't need one or two, like he needs like a series off, uh, plus like an, he needs a lot of rest right now to get him right. And I think Sir Anthony coming back and hopefully being the same guy that we know he can be will, will be a huge boost for us. So this weekend, uh, because I'm extremely unprepared and I have to look at my phone, we have the Nats, obviously. So pitching matchups. We have uh, Noah Syndergaard going tonight against Patrick Corbin. For the love of God, win. Uh, we have Eric Fetty going up against Ranger Suarez and Aaron Nola against Anibal Sanchez. So pitching favors us. Everything favors us. We've handled the Nationals very handedly. Um, we just need to continue doing that. Uh, uh, sweep them. Take two of three. Uh, actually, I won't take two of three. You need to sweep this national team. This national team is not good. Um, but listen, uh, th those teams that that are deemed not good play with a lot of tenacity. So it it could be a trap series. I hope it's not. I hope they take care of business. You know, you have Syndergaard, Suarez, and, and Nola, and hopefully Suarez can give you more. Uh, it's dangerous for the bullpen. Um, Chris Sanchez, I'm pro we're probably going to see him in this series only because either Noah Syndergaard or, um, or Suarez aren't going to go very deep in that game. I, I can't see them going more than four or five innings. Um, and then you tax the bullpen again. Um, you know, missing Wheeler is huge because, you know, for falter starts, you have Zach Wheeler. Say he goes seven innings. You only use two guys in, in those games um, as opposed to like three or four every night because the, the starters just aren't going as long. And that's the biggest concern right now is, you know, are the arms starting to finally have fatigue and, and be worn down now, you know, beginning of September, let alone, you know, if they make it into the playoffs, you know, what is that going to look like? Um, 
hopefully Wheeler is, is nice and rested to the point where he can carry us, you know, maybe give us eight innings, only have to use Sir Anthony or only have to use Robertson. And, and that's a huge night off for some of these guys who can kind of reset and, they're they're gonna be fine. I, again, like I said in the last episode, I'm not worried about this team. This is a very good baseball team. We're gonna be fine. Um, but uh, we have a two and a half game lead on the Brewers. Really, three with the three and a half with the tiebreaker. So we're fine. We're good. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna be some red October hopefully. Uh, but that's gonna do it for me. Um, thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you have any comments, concerns, anything, DM me. Or leave a comment or, you know, do whatever, do whatever you people want to do. But uh, thank you for for listening and I'll see you guys in the next one. Next one's going to be um, Sunday, probably uh, night, Sunday night. Um, we get the Eagles and the, and the Phillies. I'll be uh, working as well. So going to try to figure that out um, and look for something to do with the Eagles uh, that I'm going to be doing soon. Um, I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it, but let's just keep an eye out for that. All right. Thanks, everybody.